actually going to take these demonstrations and they'll be put onto the Scorby Learning um, site for you to have a look at if you wanted to look at things again or if you've been away, not straight away, but that's kind of quite a new thing. Okay. Right, so you need to think about a few different things then when you're choosing the fruit. One of them is whether the fruit is in season uh, and what it costs and you might want to consider things like food miles. Your parents will certainly be thinking about the cost. What other things might you want to be thinking about when you're choosing your fruits? Uh, like how big we are. Good, yes. Size, I've said five to six fruit because it will take you longer than it takes me to prepare them. Um, and they can quite get quite heavy to carry into school and things, and quite costly. So limit it to five or six. You can bring one tin in, and I would suggest things like pineapple or little mandarin oranges are good, because those things, big oranges, are quite hard for you to prepare to get the skin off and everything, and so are pineapple. So I don't want those bringing in. Uh, mangoes are very hard to prepare as well. They taste lovely. Uh, but you can get those in like um, a plastic tub if you wanted to bring those in. They've got a really hard skin on the outside and a great big stone in the middle, so they are a bit hard to prepare. Um, so think about the choice of fruit. So what do you think I've chosen? Why do you think I've chosen these particular fruits, apart from the reasons we've said already? Because they're grown in England. Yes, they're grown at, at the around at the moment. They're in season. Um, let's see. Is it Ross? Yeah. yeah. What else do you think I've chosen these for, Ross? Because they're quite big and they're lots more and quite light. Yeah. What else strikes you when you look at them? Easy. Yeah, they're easy to prepare. Excellent. And they're all different colours, aren't they? So I've got a range of different colours because we don't want a fruit salad that's going to be all green or all yellow or all orange or all dark colours. And so I've got a range of different colours there. So I want you to do the same. I'm not using all of this. I'm making them one this afternoon. So. Um, so I want you to think about the colours. I also want you to think about the textures. Who knows what texture means? How the food. Good. It where? In your, uh, in your mouth. Excellent. Texture is how food feels in your mouth. So we don't want them all to be soft texture. We want maybe some that are crunchy, some that are softer. Um, so a banana's quite soft, but an apple's quite crunchy. And you'll see that I've got two here. I've got a green one and one with a red skin. Uh, you probably won't want to bring two different um, apples because it, it could take up a lot of your fine fruits that you're going to choose from. Okay, so you're going to need some fruit juice as well. We'll talk about uh, fruit and why it's good for us as I get going. You must bring a tub, please, that's big enough, and one with a lid that is quite secure, otherwise it's hard to get this home. So this is just orange ju uh, juice. You can buy orange juice with, with bits in it, or you can just have it. This one's just a plain one. Um, and I'm using this again this afternoon, so I'm just going to put about half in. So that's about all you need. I would suggest that you bring it in a bottle like I have done, rather than a carton, because um, the tall, thin carton with a screw top lid, they're not so bad. You can get that home, or you can bring it in that with some that maybe has been used at home. But the others, where you clip the top off them, you waste the rest. It's very hard to get it home once you've done that. So you only need a little bit in the bottom there, because it's just enough to cover the fruit when we've made it. Right, you're going to work on a chopping board and using a vegetable knife. Yours are not pink in your work areas, they're black. Uh, they have black handles or brown handles. And remember, it's about how it feels in your hand. That's the sharp side, that's not, all right? You will need a chopping board, which is just on your work top. And you will see that we have colour-coded uh, at least signs in here. And um, so the one that you would normally use for fruits and vegetables is the green one. And we have different colours in food technology and catering because um, it stops something called cross-contamination. So Jude was asking me the earlier about if you cut uh, some, what was it, I forgot now what your example was. If you've been cut in. That's right, if you've been cut, yeah. And it was uh, from a knife that had some bacteria from some meat on it. So it's about not contaminating yourself um, or other foods. Cross-contamination just means bacteria moving from one place to another, all right? So if we have different chopping boards, that's less likely to happen. So the red one, for example, is for, red, uh, for raw meat. So if I, let's say I've been making a chicken casserole for tea, and then I decided to make my fruit salad, all right, and I didn't wash either the knife or the chopping board, <coughs> the bacteria that would have been on the chicken would then transfer onto my fruit. So because we don't cook the fruit for a fruit salad, we would eat those bacteria, and then you could be poorly, okay? And they can even transfer from a knife. So the, the different colours tend to prevent that from happening. And um, so we haven't got all the different colours in the units, but you do need to be aware that they exist. And you need to be very careful when you're using shopping boards that they are cleaned properly, okay? So you will also need some paper towels for your rubbish. So you'll have your chopping board in front of you. And you'll have your paper towels just in front of you as well. So you're each making your own. We're not working in pairs or anything like, uh, like that in any of the practical, usually. Okay. 
So I'm going to start with an apple. I'm going to take the label off it because I don't want that in my fruit salad. They've all been washed, by the way, to make sure that any kind of germs or bacteria that have been, or any dust or anything that might have been there in transport or in the shops, um, this come off them. You're going to use your hand in a bridge. Are we looking? And you're going to press the knife down in between your fingers so that you've got no chance of, uh, of cutting your fingers. All right. <coughs> so I've cut down. Hand in the bridge again. I'm cutting down where the core is there. Okay. And then I'm going to use my hand in the claw, I'm just going to grip hold of it like that and cut the core out. That's where the pits are. Okay? And then I'm going to use my hand in the bridge again. I'm going to slice it in one direction and then in the other direction. And then I'm going to just keep my fingers out of the way. You can sometimes hold onto it like that. That's called a claw grip. And this is a bridge hold for your fruit. Um, and we're going to dice it. It's called dicing when we cut it up into small pieces into um, <coughs> equal sizes that are okay to put in your mouth. So we don't want it just cutting in half, that's too big, all right? If you see any bad bits on your fruit, obviously you'll get rid of those. So any bruised bits, any um, bits of fruit that don't look as though they're nice to eat, we want to get rid of. So when you're choosing fruits, those things are also important. We've said about the colours and the textures and so on, but you would look at the, the condition of the fruit as you're buying them. Um, and if there were any bruises, it tells you that it's perhaps been damaged in some way. If it's very soft, so if I'm buying kiwis, I nearly always have a package, pre-packaged in other things. One minute, I'll have to keep it there. Um, if it's very soft, I'm not going to buy it because it just squashes when I'm trying to prepare it. So we do need to look at the texture and make sure it's not bruised and not overripe. I picked up a pair this morning from home um, and it was very bruised at the top and it was quite soft as well, so I could tell it wasn't going to be very nice inside. I didn't want it to be overripe. Okay? So, just finishing on with this one then. So hand in a bridge where you can, otherwise using your hand in a claw to grip on the fruit, and that way we provide, oh, we prevent any kind of cuts from taking place. And we want it to be evenly sized and the right size to put into your mouth. Now apples will go brown, we know that, don't we? If you don't eat them straight away, once they've been cut and the oxygen in the air gets to them, then the apples will go brown. So I put those into the juice, we need the juice in straight away so we can stop this browning from happening. Which other fruits here will go brown once they're open? Are they? And banana, yes, okay. So those two also. I'm going to do that one last. So pears the same as an apple, even though it's a different shape. Uh, so I'm going to cut the end off, and then I'm going to hold it in upright like that, hand in a bridge, and cut down the middle, because I want to get to the bit where the pips are. Okay? Much softer in texture, a pear, especially if it's ripe, like this one is. So it's easier to cut. Okay? You can. Right, so let's think about why fruit is important. Who's heard of the five a day campaign? Oh, yeah. So shout out, you put your hand up if you've heard of the five a day campaign. Okay. Is it Max? Yeah. Max, tell me what the five a day campaign is about. Oh, you have to, like, to say you should eat five fruits a day. Yeah, so is it is it whole fruits? Is it a whole pineapple and a whole, whole melon? Uh, is it just palm? It, yes, five portions, what we call a portion. So what do you think a portion of fruit or vegetables is? Yes? They're like uh, a handful. Sort of, yes, it could be a handful. Um, it's going to be yeah, a handful of strawberries, a few strawberries, uh, a small bunch of grapes, probably not as many as I've brought in there, probably about half that, maybe about four or five strawberries. If it's a small fruit like that, it's two of them, okay? So that's one portion. That's one portion, okay? But that's also one portion, and so is that. For vegetables, it's about three tablespoons. That's a big spoon. <coughs> a bit bigger than that one, just a minute. Three tablespoons of vegetables um, make up a portion, okay? So we should be eating five portions of fruit and vegetables every day. Put your hand up, please, if you think you do eat five portions of fruit and vegetables most days. Maybe not every day, but most days. Excellent. Okay. So why do we need to eat fruit and vegetables? Why do we need to eat fruit and vegetables? What is it that they contain that's good for us? It keeps you healthy, yes. Do you know which, which, what's in them that actually makes that happen? It is a vitamin, yes. Do you know which one? Yeah, go on, there's A, B, C and D. So which one is it? Which is the one that's talked about the most? Don't shout out, please. I can hear it over here. Yeah, vitamin C. 
So vitamin C is what we find in fruit and vegetables, and we need it to keep our bodies healthy, fights disease, basically. Can I just show you how to do this as I'm talking? Keep your hands up and then I'll ask at the end. Right, so a kiwi has quite, got quite a tough skin. We don't want the skin left on that. We do keep the skin on some fruits, and I'll explain why in a minute when I do some this. So put the point of your knife in and just saw like that. Point of the knife in and saw, okay? Now we need to get the outside skin off. Now I can do it like this way because I've got good control with my thumb and my fingers, but what I would directly recommend for you is that you just cut around the outside like that. Try not to take too much skin off or you're going to have very much kiwi left. Alternatively, you can do a vegetable, you can use a vegetable peeler, which is one of these, and you'll have all of this in your um, cutlery tray, just down underneath where you're working. So this will also take the skin off. Um, so, but probably the easiest way, as I say, is just to cut downwards, but very slowly and carefully, and trying to just follow the shape of the kiwi so that you're not taking too much off. Okay. And then you're going to turn it sideways, make sure you've got all that skin off, because it's very hard and it's a bit furry, so it's not nice to eat. And then hand it a bridge, cut it in half, and then you put the flat side down, Keep you having the claw now like that. Maybe again in half again. Okay. Pop them into the fruit salad and the juice straight away. They're not going to go brown, but the other things are. I'm just mixing them around a little bit there to make sure that the pear and the apple is covered with the juice. It's, once it's covered, then it stops it from going brown. Um, often you will see in recipes that they use lemon juice. Sometimes lemon juice is added to a fruit salad. Okay, strawberries, cut the ends off, I cut a little bit more than the end there because I could do a little bit of a uh, bit bruise. In half if it's quite big and into quarters, if it's a small one you might just need to go in half. So all of your rubbish is going on a paper towel so that when you, you finish you can pick it up quite easily and pop it in your bin. Bin in each work area. Okay. Right, then. Fruit also contains something else that's really good for us, and it begins with F. Yes? Fibre. Excellent, fibre. So does anybody know why we need fibre in our diets? Yes? Oh, no, no. Got in Yesterday, so have a think back then. It's something to do with your digestive system. Oh, it helps you eat other foods. Helps what, sorry? It helps you eat other foods. So Not really, no. Yes? It helps your digestive system. Anybody know a bit more? Okay, what happens is it helps the food to move through your body at the correct speed. Okay? And what happens when it moves through your body is it, it goes through quite quickly um, and any waste is comes out at the other end at the speed that you're supposed to do, and that's what you can be constipated. It means that you can go to the toilet properly, and I know it's not a very nice conversation, but fibre is needed to prevent constipation, help your digestive system to work properly. Uh, and having a poor digestive system is linked to quite a lot of diseases, um, so we need to be eating plenty of fibre in our diet. Another reason for eating plenty of fibre is it keeps you full. Foods that have fibre in them tend to keep you full for longer. So if you eat a fruit salad, you get plenty of vitamin C and fibre, and it will keep you full much longer than if you eat a Mars bar, which is just lots of sugar. I'm doing grapes, by the way, and mine have got seeds in them, pips in them, sorry. I eat mainly seeds and not in grapes anymore, but mine have got some in, so I'm just cutting them in half, and I'm just cutting the, the, the pips out with my, with my fingernail. Okay. And I've chosen black grapes, which are going to give a contrasting colour, obviously, to the things that I've got in there already. Okay. Um, Satsuma. So, fibre. And fibre is particularly found in the skins of fruit and vegetables, and that's why I've left the skins on. And the skins are going to provide a different texture, aren't they, to the fruit salad. So it's no good leaving them on oranges and kiwis and bananas. We don't want skins on there. We can't eat them. It's too tough. Um, but when we can use them, oh, sorry, when we can leave them on, they're going to provide more fibre, and they make the fruit salad nice and crunchy, and it's good for us, basically. So, fibre, vitamin C, there is one more vitamin that's found in some fruit and vegetables. Yes? Vitamin D. Not, not D, no. Oh. Found in carrots. Oh. Yes? Vitamin A. A. Do you know what it's for? Mm -hmm. 
the carrots supposedly do. They don't they oh. see in the dark. Yes, they do. They help you to see in the dark, and that is true. It isn't, it isn't uh, what we call no light tape. So yes, they do help your eyesight, especially in dim light. Okay, who are watching? Um, the, these are the I brought in today. Satsumas. Uh, nice and easy to peel. The skins are nice and soft, so you can get the skin off very easily. Um, if they're quite big pieces, you can cut them in half, but just try not to get too much, to let the juice squash out, otherwise it's not as nice. So these are very juicy, they're going to give a different texture, they're soft, but they're very uh, they're sort of liquidy, aren't they? Nice and moist. Okay, so vitamin A, vitamin C, fibre in fruit. You should be eating fibre a day. Um, it's really important for your health that you do try to eat five fruit and veg a day. And um, it can be, how could you get five fruits and vegetables into your, into your daily diet? How could you get fruit into your breakfast, for example? Yes? Like bananas on excellent. Yeah, excellent. So that's what I do. I usually put, in the summer months anyway, I put a few strawberries and a few blueberries on my um, breakfast cereal. In fact, um, Logan, can you go to the white fridge for me, please, and find a little tub with some blueberries in? Yes. Apple pips contain cyanide, pear pips do the same. They can do what, sorry? Apple pips contain cyanide, pear pips contain cyanide. No well. idea, I didn't know that apple pips did. Who told you that? Um, well, my friend actually nearly um, ate the pips and he became a bit like, you know, like um, drowsy because he only ate a lot of apples. I'm, I'm not sure that that's true. I can't imagine that they will be sold if that was uh, correct. You have, you have to eat a lot of apple pips too. Yeah. Because it's got a very small amount of it. Okay. Yeah. Just one more minute then. So I've got a few blueberries here as well. Uh, blueberries are really, really good for us. The brighter, generally, the brighter the colour of fruit and vegetables, the better they are for us. So we call these superfoods. They're really good for us. Uh, make sure when you put in blueberries in, because they go quite, they sometimes go a bit soft and they get mouldy quite easily. So you do need to use them when they're quite fresh. Um, and then mix it all around. So I, don't, I didn't count how many pieces of fruit I put in there. Um, I did a, a good variety to show you how to prepare a reasonable number of different fruits. So mix them around um, and that's what your fruit salad should look like. So when we're looking for marking, because we do mark practical work, you've got your mark sheet, remember, in your, in your folders now. Um, we're going to be looking then, what, what are we going to be looking for for this particular dish? And we're marking what we're going to be looking for. What's your name? Um, Rebecca. Rebecca. Um, like not mouldy fruit and Good. the right amount of juice in it. Yeah. What else? Top oh. choice of fruit. Um, oh. Like a different, like a vine green. Good. So, colours. Colours, yes, it's colour more than anything that we want, isn't it? Uh, but obviously the textures are important as well. But if you were looking at that uh, and wondering, you know, do I want to eat it? It's got to look colourful, hasn't it? All right, I'll have a reasonable variety there. Um, what else would put you off eating it? You kind of touched on it, Rebecca. Yes. Nick. Yeah. Um, the mouldy. Yeah. Well, if if the fruit didn't look as though you got rid of the bits that weren't very nice, or if they weren't evenly sized, or if you saw things like kits floating around in there, we don't want that, do we? Okay. So there's your fruit salad finished. Are there any questions about what to choose, what to bring, how to get it here? Ethan. You've got like watermelon. You could bring a slice. Yeah. yeah. And then right here. Yeah, just listen. Watermelons are things that are quite hard to prepare, so just beware. Pineapples, I don't want you bringing pineapples, it's just too hard. I end up doing it for you. Uh, mangoes are very hard to prepare, so I don't advise those either. Melons have great big thick skins, but if you want to bring a slice of melon, we could cope with that you could get a slice of, of melon, wrap it up in cling film. I put melon into fruit salad a lot and it is nice and it's, uh, it's a really nice juicy fruit as well. So either watermelon or the yellow, the honeydew melon. melon. Um, so be, be, just be sensible please, it's nice to have all these lovely fruits but you've got to remember, um, you know, can you prepare it? And I've given you a warning about things which are hard to prepare. So if you're wanting things like pineapple, it's not quite as nice as fresh, I do admit, but the tin is nice and it does give the flavour. It's very sweet as pineapple, so it gives the flavour into that. Yes? Um, you said about the um, skins containing fibre. Pomegranates, you have to remove the skin, but they have skin on the, um, like the yeah. seeds. Yeah. Would that give yeah. the fibre? Fibre is even inside as well, but there is skin in the outside as well. Okay. Right.